Ned, the concept of free will is something that everybody seems to understand. Everybody seems to think that we have free will. I know I do. I'm not sure about you. We always have that, that feeling. Yet f the concept of free will has been enormously complicated. It's one of the classical problems of philosophy that, that really goes way back. But in today's world, we have this tremendous development of neuroscience in which we can begin to look at free will perhaps in a different way. So I want to ask you as a philosopher to first of all define free will and then we'll talk about it in the context of neuroscience. Okay, the concept of free will. I think the concept of free will is confused. The reason it's confused is that free will on the usual concept is incompatible with determinism and it's also incompatible with indeterminism. Let's discuss what that means. Okay, so why is it incompatible with determinism? Well, for reasons that are pr pretty familiar to people. If an earlier state of your body determines what you're going to do now, how can it be free? And that's determinism. That that's determinism. That but one determin event, event yeah. in the past, yeah. events in the past will, will conspire together to absolutely have an event now. Right. Um, indeterminism, though, is just as bad because if you do something by chance, that doesn't mean it's done by you freely. Um, this is a point made, made many years ago. Um, so it looks like both indeterminism and determinism are, are incompatible with, with free will, which shows there's something wrong with the concept. Now, often, when we see something is wrong with a concept, we have a choice of chucking it and saying there isn't any such thing as free will, or accepting a kind of reduced form of it and saying, yes, there is free will, but it isn't exactly what you thought it was. So I guess in the latter mode, we could say, sure, there's free will, and it's completely compatible with determinism. It's just certain ways of being determined that are incompatible with free will, like determination where somebody's pointing a gun at me, or determination where something goes wrong with my <coughs> brain that um, makes it the case that I have a compulsion to do something. So those are the cases where there's no free will, but in the ordinary case where there's no compulsion, no gun, you do have free will. Because you're defining free will in a diminished way. That's right. A and and, and, and right. you, you could also, though, attack the premises. You could attack the definition of determinism and indeterminism. You can hold free will strong yeah. and try to modify your definitions yeah. of determinism or indeterminism. But we have pretty good definitions of determinism that come from work in mathematical physics. Okay. That where it's, what it is for a system to be deterministic is for a later state to be a function of an earlier state. Mm -hmm. One and only one later state is a function of an earlier state. That's what determinism is. So you're not very happy to, be, to, criti to, to, to critique or to diminish the premises of the definitions of determinism or indeterminism. You're, you put the focus of your wrath on, on yeah. the definition of free will. Yeah, I think we should get our definition of determinism from science. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, they're the ones who uh, are you know, doing the work that allows us to really understand what a deterministic system is. All right, let's now look at free will in the context of, of brain science. And the, mm. the brain has all of these enormously complicated processes, but they're all physical, and they all follow yeah. these physical laws and seemingly are determined in, by preceding physical events. And so there seems to be a, a, a fairly uh, tight uh, a chain of being between right. these events in the brain. However many yeah. multiple trillions are going on at the same time, still they all seem to be determined. Yeah. One result that has made people feel that uh, brain science shows that uh, free will, we, we don't have it, is that every, every decision a person makes, every conscious decision, has, uncon has an unconscious prior part that can be detected using a uh, current mm. instrumentation. Mm. So you've got readiness potential for that occurs before somebody's um, 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 uh, actual c uh, awareness of any decision. Um, now, some people, Benjamin Libet, a famous person who's worked on this, says, "Wow, you still have veto power." But of course, even that act of vetoing has an unconscious <laughs> prior part. So I think we just have to accept the idea that any conscious act or um, any conscious anything is going to be a part of a larger event which has an unconscious part. And that doesn't, of course, show that the conscious part doesn't do anything. It just shows that any conscious event is an event that occurs in time and has unconscious 
antecedent parts. Not, a, not something that worries me as far as my free will goes. <laughs> but if you are defining consciousness in a purely physical manner, which you do, yeah. so therefore it is produced by a whole series of biological events in the past that lead up to the way it is today, right. uh, much, less, much like uh, um, uh, digestive juices are the product of, of, of glands in the stomach right. or right. the kidney excreting urine or so, something right. like that. It's, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a normal bodily process right. Right. that are based on these events. Doesn't that, ipso facto, by the same reasoning, uh, make uh, consciousness uh, completely determined? Yes, I think consciousness is determined. Well, to the extent, look, in, there is a certain amount of indeterminism, but I wouldn't rely, that is because of quantum mechanics. Yeah, but, that's but I'm a, not going to rely yeah, on that. I, I think that's a mistake. No, I think consciousness is determined, but we still have free will in the only sense we can have free will, which is that our actions are not caused by compulsions or people pointing guns at us. That's what it is to have free will in the only way we can have it. Isn't that normally defined as compatibilism by saying that you're, you're, you're diminishing your definition of free will to be compatible with an absolute determinism which you're not willing to change? Right. That's exactly right. But the alternative to that is to allow some intuitive notion of free will that not only doesn't exist but can't exist because it's incompatible with both in determinism and indeterminism. So if we're going to be reasonable about what free will is. We have to pick a, a, a coherent notion, and a coherent notion, the most obvious coherent notion, is one in which we have free will. A, a diminished form, in diminished making it compatible yeah. Yeah. with the deterministic uh, 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 genesis of consciousness. Yes, we're on there the same page. A, well, be careful before you come <laughs> to a conclusion. Uh, there is an alternative yeah. to this whole system. Mm -hmm. The criticism of, of free will and the coming to the diminished form of free will compatible with determinism. And that is if you have consciousness having any aspect of which is immaterial. Right. With an immaterial uh, element to consciousness, mm -hmm. then you can reintroduce a full-bodied, pardon the bad pun, full-bodied free will uh, into, into the equation. Well, I think it does depend, of course, on whether that immaterial substance is itself deterministic. <laughs> if it's deterministic, you have exactly the same problem. And, of course, if it's indeterministic, you have the same problem about indeterminism in the brain. <laughs> so I don't think bringing in um, um, the immaterial soul is going to help. You're going to have exactly the same um, issue of a, an immaterial soul being either deterministic or indeterministic and exactly the same interaction with the issue of free will and its compatibility with determinism.